You and I have mutual goals. I mean, working for the feds? There's something else going on here. Someone's got to be running Pikeman. Who? General Hospital latest update. Sonny's shocker betrayal revealed. Is Ava plotting against him? Plus, Anna's furious showdown unveiled. The latest General Hospital rumors hint at a massive betrayal rocking Port Charles as Sunny faces a stunning revelation about Ava's possible alliance with Pikeman. Could she be setting Sunny up for a fall? Meanwhile, tensions escalate as Anna draws a line with Sunny, sparking a heated confrontation. Plus, Jason's unexpected visit to Liz's home stirs up trouble. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, after watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. General Hospital Spoilers, Sunny's biggest betrayal, is Ava working with Pikeman, trying to set him up? General Hospital Spoilers and rumors tease Sunny Corinthos, Maurice Bernard, might be in for his biggest betrayal yet. Could Ava Jerome, Mora West, be working with Pikeman, trying to set him up? General Hospital Spoilers, Mob Boss Murders Tied to Pikeman The mob boss murders seem to be tied to Pikeman, and the evidence ties the weapons used to the WSB it was clear ex-WSB director John Brennan, Charles Measure, was involved. Brennan was buddy-buddy with Sonny's Pikeman contact Roman Hume, Mark Engelhart, and the weapons used came from a theft of the WSB arsenal in Berlin. It had already been established that Pikeman was an organization where disgraced WSB ex-agents could find work. Valentin Cassidine, James Patrick Stewart, had worked for them at one time in his mercenary days, and apparently still has ties to them. He was the one who warned Sonny to watch his back when dealing with Pikeman's security group and set up the first shipment. General Hospital Spoilers, could Ava Jerome be moving Pikeman shipments through her art gallery? The latest murder of a mob boss was Olivia Jerome, Tanya Walker, Ava's older half-sister, but they were anything but close, she'd never met her before. Olivia had kidnapped Ava and held her hostage and tried to kill brother Julian Jerome, William DeVry, so it's plain Olivia didn't sense family ties to either Ava or Julian. Ava worked late the night Austin Gatlin Holt, Roger Howarth, was killed, his murder also suspected to be tied in what had she been doing that night in secret? Ava was there long after Trina Robinson, Tabiana Ali, would have left, and while Trina sometimes works with shipments, there are some she doesn't, and doesn't know about. Could Ava be moving Pikeman shipments through her gallery when Trina's not there and keeping a separate set of books Trina knows nothing about? General Hospital Spoilers, why did Ava Jerome have to be at Selena Wu's warehouse? Sonny hadn't planned to include Ava in the warehouse meeting where he met with Selena Wu, Lydia look, Ava was the one who insisted on being there. They had been under attack on his island near Puerto Rico, and he didn't want to expose her to danger but she did know they would be there. Could she have been the rat who drew fire to Sonny, and told the boss only known as a stone about the warehouse meeting? Sonny trusts Ava, one of the few people he does trust anymore he doesn't even trust his son Michael Corinthos, Chad Duell anymore, nor Jason Morgan, Steve Burton. Sonny is becoming emotionally close to Ava and she seems to be trying to seduce him but to what end, could Ava setting him up be his biggest betrayal? Today's next update, Anna draws a line in the sand with Sonny, and Jason's visit to Liz's home isn't a hit. Today on General Hospital, Natalia puts her foot down regarding Blaze's deception contract, Diane informs Alexis of what she's found out and Jason visits Dante in the hospital. Sonny arrives at the hospital and finds Dante walking through the halls, and is happy to see him up. Dante gets back to bed, and he just wants his strength back. Sonny says that will take time. Dante is glad he was able to sort things out regarding Jason and tells his dad what happened on the pier. He says he didn't know the guy who shot him, and his body hasn't been found. He doesn't know why Jason was with him, but Jason was trying to get him help. Sonny explains he saw Jason, and he's working as an informant for the FBI. Sonny states Jason is dead to him now. Dante thinks he should get the full story before writing him off. He says Jason was his right-hand man, he relied on him. Sonny says when he came back from Nixon Falls, Jason was marrying Carly and things were never the same. He thinks Jason isn't the Jason he knew. 
Sunny doesn't want to waste their time together talking about Jason. At Liz's place, in a robe, she calls upstairs for Jake to hurry up in the shower as she needs one before her shift. There is a knock at the door and Aiden answers, it's Jason. Jason recognizes him and says it's been a while. Aiden invites him in, and Liz is surprised to see him. Jason hopes it's okay that he stopped by and wanted to thank her for being at this arraignment. Liz wanted to see for herself what was going on and congratulated him on having the charges dropped. He feels he probably should have come earlier, but she says the timing is better now. She apologizes for the mess, as she just got off a double shift and is head nurse now. Jason heard Epiphany died, along with Bobby and Britt, and so much has happened. Liz notes he looks different, and Jason says he is different. Jake comes downstairs, is shocked to see Jason, and asks why he is here. Jason came to see him. Jake asks his dad where he's been all this time. Jason explains he got into trouble and was forced to take a job he didn't want to. Jake asks why he didn't tell them he was alive. Jason assures him that he would have gotten in touch if he could have, and to please believe him. Jake asks, would you believe you? Jason knows he has a lot of explaining to do, and he just wants to talk to him. Jake again lashes out as his father. Jason swears he didn't have a choice in what happened and didn't want to leave him. Jason didn't mean to hurt him and decides to leave. Liz walks Jason out and tells him that she'd be lying if she didn't have the same questions Jake does. Despite everything, it is good to see him, and his death never felt real to her. Jason says Jake has every right to be angry, and he's glad he can express it. Liz says Jake is still a teenager and has fears, mostly of losing his father. Later, Liz sits down with Jake and knows this isn't easy for him, but it's also not good to be so angry at his dad. Jake doesn't think she should be okay with this and act like he didn't do anything wrong. Liz says that's not what she's doing, and she just needs him not to lash out at everyone around him. Jake asks if she knew his dad was alive and kept it a secret. Liz promises she didn't know. Jake feels guilty for feeling so sad when dad died, but now he thinks it was easier having a dead father than having one who is alive and only commits crimes and has nothing to say to his family. Liz explains his dad is a man of few words, but he wouldn't have come today if he didn't want to see him, and she knows he wouldn't have stayed away on his own. Jake asks why he's like this. Liz says he's complicated, but Jason doesn't lie and doesn't make things up. Jake guesses Jason won't show up here again after today, but Liz says don't count on that, he'll keep showing up. At the Invader, the gossip columnist Adrian argues with Alexis that Nina made him associate editor, so he gets a say when and where his pieces run. As they argue, Diane arrives and asks if this is a bad time. Alexis is glad she came as she was just showing Adrian out, and tells him to call Nina if he has an issue. Alexis vents to Diane that Nina is making her life a living hell now that Adrian is an editor. Diane has good news, she's done some digging and is getting closer to getting Alexis back to practicing law. Diane says one of the original attorneys on the legal board of her dismal, Fergus Byrne, had to recuse himself, as he was Neil Byrne's older brother. When he recused himself, he was replaced with his law partner, which is sketchy. She feels this charge of bias is another reason to get this overturned. Alexis never knew of or even met Fergus. Alexis says she's still not sure she should go through with this. As frustrating as this job is, she isn't up working till 3 a.m. or having nightmares of making a mistake that could get a client thrown in jail. Diane says the Alexis she knows never took the easy way out, and she loved a challenge, so what is this about? Alexis reveals Molly is worried about her sobriety, and if the appeal is dismissed, that she'll drink again. Alexis admits she's even considered this could derail her sobriety. Diane can't foresee the future, but she knows her friend, and how strong she is. She doesn't think this would cause her to start drinking again, as this nightmare of a paper hasn't caused her to slip up. Diane says her argument to get the petition rolling has been granted, so what do they do? Adrian returns with a great idea that he and Nina just had and wants to run by her. He says everyone loves his column so much that they thought they could split it up into a daily piece. Alexis again throws him out of her office, and then tells Diane to get her the hell out of this paper. 
At Deception, Lucy, Brooklyn and Maxie meet with Blaze about signing as the new face of Deception. Brooklyn says this will be great for her career, and Maxie calls it a win-win for all of them. As Blaze is about to sign it, Natalie enters, grabs the contract, and reads it over. Natalie says she knows they approached Allison before about being the face of deception, and asks why they separated with the other woman. Lucy explains Sasha was too wholesome, and the industry needs someone edgy. Natalie won't have the term edgy associated with Blaze. Blaze agrees with her mom, she doesn't strive to be edgy, she sees herself more as a creative force and a singer. Lucy says they just want Blaze to be herself. Natalie then has an issue with Blaze being a spokesmodel and asks what that means. They explain that she'd be a cover model, but also on the Home and Heart channel selling their products. Natalie refuses to have Blaze selling products on a shopping channel, and there will be no deal unless they drop the part of her being a traveling saleswoman. Natalie crosses out a bunch of sections to make the contract approvable, with Blaze only being a model. Lucy tells Blaze she understands her mom wants what is best for her, but being the face of deception is a big opportunity. Blaze says her mom makes a point, she's a singer and performer, she's not a spokesmodel. Blaze asks if they'd be open to hiring a second face to do the shopping channels and meet and greets. Lucy likes the idea and thinks two faces are better than one. Maxie and Brooke Lynn roll their eyes. They sign the contracts, and Lucy is glad they could work this out and that they will do great things together. Natalie says one more thing, she'd like their word that moving forward Allison will be a woman of mystery, and her private life will remain off limits. Allison will only be known by her beauty and music, no pieces on her personal life. Confused, Maxie asks Blaze if that is what she wants. Blaze says, absolutely. Anna talks with Detective Bennett about getting Dex Heller into the PCPD, as he's also one of the instructors there. She says he's ex-military, so he'll pass the physical and drug screening but likely needs time to study for the written exam. Bennett trusts her judgment, and Anna explains his experience working for Sonny should be useful to them. Bennett is not certain about this, but Anna believes Dex can help them with what he knows as one of Sonny's insiders. The detective always thought she held a soft spot for Sonny. Anna assures him that Sonny will be held to the same standard as everyone else. She has realized that organized crime in the city needs to be brought down, and Dex is an opportunity they may never get again. Later, Sonny stops by to see Anna, who claims she's very busy. Sonny relays he just came from seeing Dante. He's up and walking, and a full recovery will take a while. Dante also said Jason didn't shoot him, but he was still on the roof with the sniper. Sunny asks if she is planning to charge Jason with anything for being there. Anna loses her temper and calls him a son of a bitch, and says it's clear Jason stopped that sniper from shooting him. She says this is an FBI case now, and if she wants him to arrest someone she could always arrest him for attacking Cyrus. Sunny is confused, as he thought they were getting closer. Anna says she now sees her attitude towards him was colored by what he did for Robin and Stone, but she is not okay, with him beating an old man bloody and unconscious. She is police commissioner now and his days skating by are over, so get out of her office. Back at the hospital, Dante wakes up and sees Jason standing at the door. Dante didn't expect to see him, but is glad to and thanks him for the bandage and calling 911, he saved his life. Jason blames himself for Dante being on the pier in the first place. Dante laughs and says, good point, I take it back. Dante asks him why Jason turned around and why he didn't keep running. Jason knew he wouldn't stop chasing and thought it would be safer to let him arrest him. Dante asks if he can tell him what happened to the guy who shot him. Jason doesn't know his real name, but he's dead and he only has theories of what happened to his body. Dante asks if he too was an FBI informant. Jason assumes he's been talking to Sonny. Dante explains his working for the feds has messed him up, and Sonny thinks he's a traitor. However, Dante knows something is going on, as he has never ratted on Sonny. Jason hasn't flipped on Sonny, but can't say who he's informing on. Dante thinks the FBI must have something big on him. Jason says it was big enough that he had no choice. Jason swears Sonny is safe, 
and he will do what it takes to make sure it stays that way. Thanks for watching this videos, please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.